All right, what's up, YouTube? So right now, um, I was I haven't been able I wasn't able to pretty much like you know do a live video today, and I was trying to do that, but unfortunately, there's a problem with the YouTube app, so I can't do it right now. So I figured, you know what? I have to find a way. I have to hustle. I can't just say, you know what? Because I can't do a live video, I won't upload anything. But then I realized, you know what, Chris? Just do a podcast instead. Record it right now as I'm driving to my next destination, to a meeting that I have right now, actually, and just talk while I'm driving, and so I can just get this done right away and give you guys as much content as I possibly can. Uh, as you probably know, because I am a vlogger, when I talk about topics, I don't really, like, I'll plan what topic I'll talk about, but when I actually talk about those topics, I don't usually, like, do all the research that I usually do because it's a vlog, and I'm just talking about what I think, you know, what my, give you my best professional opinion. Uh, especially within my profession, within my career as a front-end developer um, and everything that I've learned from just speaking to other developers and speaking from developers throughout the entire world uh, with this opportunity that I'm granted as a YouTuber, as someone who has a channel of over 10,000 people. And not just that, but people who have cha- like a channel of like, what, 11,000, 20, 30,000 people? But for, fortunately for me, within this channel, because of your support, I get an average view of more than 1,000 views per video. Sometimes I get a thousand views in a couple hours. Sometimes it'll take maybe two days. Maybe it'll take an entire day. Right? And that changes from time to time, and that's totally fine. And so I have a, cons- a consistent amount of viewers. And so today, what I want to talk about, and I think this is really important, is pretty much like um, what are the signs? All right. And I'm going to do, a, I'm thinking of doing a five part series instead of doing it all in one time. So I could give you the most content as possible. I can be as detailed as possible and give you the best tips as possible. And so what I want to talk about right now are the five tips, okay, or five signs that show that you are on the right track as a front-end developer. Five signs that show that you will become a good front-end developer and that you're on your way to getting hired. And I think this is really important because, you know, I could just say five things right now and just tell you this is what you need to do, this is what you need to do, right, the five broad things I could say and not go into detail, and then you're going to wonder, okay, these are the five things I need to do, but what in detail do I need to do to make sure I actually am that person that is on the right track to become a good developer that companies want to hire, right? And you probably hear my car in the background right now, so for, so for that, I do apologize. So uh, check it out as I do talk about this. And so this is the first sign, and it's really important. And I think this is something that even I missed as well, because like, this was me. And I didn't realize this for like six or seven months. Now, I was very fortunate to get hired as a front-end developer in just three months as a web developer. And because of that, because they knew that I was limited in my skills at that time, they knew that I wasn't the best front-end developer out there, but they knew I had potential. And so as I was learning, um, the senior developer didn't always look at my code, but he'll give me tips because he was always busy solving bugs. Uh, the senior developer, he would give me tips and just guide me here and there, but he didn't always see the code. Um, and so, uh, who am I going with this? Um, and so, the number one thing, number one, okay, out of the five tips, this is the first one I'm going to give you because this is very important, is that the first time to show that you are on the right track to be a good front-end developer and get hired is that you have clear, consistent and structured code. That you have code that is organized and that is easy to read. Now, why is this so important? Like, Chris, easy to read, structured code. Code's already confusing as, as it is just to even read or even try to understand it, Chris. So I honestly don't even know what you are even talking about. Well, this is what I'm talking about. Structured code is important because, number one, for example, let's just look at it like this, right? Um, let's say you have a house, right? Um, and you're having dinner, you're, you're up for a promotion, you have a chance of really uh, getting hired, or you have a chance of getting hired, and you're gonna have a dinner with your boss, and you're gonna bring your boss over to your house. And so you bring your boss over, uh, and let me ask you, if you're up for a promotion, and you wanna impress your boss, you have your wife or your girlfriend, you know, whoever it is to impress him, uh, let me ask you, if you was gonna come to your house and see a very unorganized living room, a very dirty de- uh, table, the dishes aren't even clean that well, the lights are dim, uh, the table's dirty, the, va- the floor looks like it hasn't been vacuumed in months, if not years, and you see spiders everywhere. Not let alone that, you even see cockroaches <laughs> within the corner of the kitchen where the food came out of. Yes, you might be the hardest worker at your company. You might work harder than even your own boss. But yeah, that might be true. 
But if he sees that first impression that you're not clean, you're not organized, it doesn't matter how hard you work. That impression he sees of you will stick with him forever. What I'm going to say here is that first impressions count. Well, Chris, first of all, I'm never going to invite my future interviewee or company to my house because they first of all have to hire me first to even get a job in the first place. So why are you mentioning this? Well, what represents you is your code. The same way that everyone has their own, like, for example, the same way everyone has their own kind of signature, everyone has their own kind of handwriting, right? No one writes exactly the same. Not even twins. Not even twins have the exact same fingerprint. Well, the way that you organize and structure your code is different from everyone else, too. It shows who you are, even as a person as well. And why is this important? Because when you apply for a job, you usually have a portfolio. Unless you're lucky like me, I don't really have a portfolio at all. But when people actually look at your like your portfolio, they're going to inspect it with Google, right? With inspect mode with uh, on Google Chrome, whatever they use. They're going to inspect your code and they want to see how organized you are. And you can look at all of that. And why it's really important, if, for example, you just literally right click on a page, you do a inspect source and it'll show you the code the way you wrote it. Now, why is this so important? Because first of all, your code, the way it's organized and structured shows how professional you are or not. Not just that, not a lot of people realize this, but number two, it also even shows if you have potential to even become a good programmer or not, even if you're just applying for a junior position. Why? First of all, if you don't even know how to organize your code to make it clean, to make it look good, to make it look neat, then why would they hire you in the first place? Because why, why is this so important? Because every company in the world has their own standard on how they want their code structured. Every company in the world has their own standard and how a code should be written on how you should do things certain ways and, and how you should either push or pull things and what order and you know what do you do. Everyone has their own standard and structure. But the problem is if you don't even know how to organize your own code and, uh, and structure it in the correct way where people can even read it easily, then how do they know that if you were to be hired, if you were to join their company, how would they know that they could even trust you to organize your code when you join a company? Because if you're not putting the effort to even do that now, then that means you probably won't even put the effort to do it when you get the job. So first impressions, they count. They really matter and they're really important. That is why I really stress this. And I don't say this enough. I actually probably don't even say it often because I didn't realize about myself until what, maybe four or five months ago? That your code has to be organized. Why? Because there are even like uh, junior developers at my company or even interns that come to my company. And I, I could tell that they're a noob, at least in the front end aspect, not back end, right? I don't know back end that well yet. But in the front end aspect, I could tell that they're like a noob or they're really new by the way they organize their code, the way they just leave divs off hanging to the right or left and they don't organize it, make, not making the DOM look nice. And so this is the, one of the first signs, okay? This is really important and really make sure that you're able to organize this um, I think it's something that a lot of people forget to do, and um, I just make sure that's not us. You know what I mean? And so I'm not sure how I'm gonna show you how I structure my code. I think on the next video, probably on Wednesday or Thursday, I'm gonna show you how I organize my code. And since this is gonna be podcast style, so thank you guys for guys to even listening to this right now. But again, the number one, the first sign to show you're on your way to becoming a good programmer, to getting hired, is number one: you must organize your code well, have it structured. Ask any professional programmer that you know that actually works in the actual job that probably isn't a junior. <laughs> and you'll, they'll tell you, yeah, yes, it, it's very important to have your code structured. And if your code isn't structured and not organized and not easy to read, it's really annoying. It's really annoying. And I've seen it and I don't like it. And I know my senior developer doesn't like it. He actually corrected me, Chris, what's going on, man? You have to organize your code. And I remember he actually thought that I wasn't good because of that, even though I really was good. Because that's the first sign that people can, that's the first sign to show if you have potential or not, if you're good or not, if you're skilled or not, if you care or not. You know what I mean? So, all right, guys. Thank you for listening to this long podcast. I do appreciate it. I hope you guys really enjoy this. Let me know. Like this video if you haven't yet. Leave a comment below. If you prefer me to do even more podcasts throughout the week to get you guys more content, you know what? I probably will now because this is just so much easier and I could just talk to my phone and just upload it. That's it. And it's nice, and I can think clearly, and I like it a lot, and it's different. So I'll probably do that more often Um, since right now the YouTube Live app has some problems with it. And so, yeah. But anyway, guys, if you like this video, please like the video. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe. I'm starting to post up even more content than ever. 
and leave a comment below. Comments mean the world to me. So thank you guys for watching uh, or listening. <laughs> uh, this is Krishan. This is the Life of a Web Developer. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.